he's, he, he, he's so bad right now that you I just know. can't. The but U, then so is Ronaldo. Bro, the, U, the U is scared of the football. The U is so scared is of the Ronaldo. football. But with, 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 with CPR7, right? And Rashford offers you Bro, I, I, and you know what? Play Force 9. Play Lingard. Play Force 9. <laughs> Play Lingard. Play Lingard. Play Lingard. Play Lingard. What is your profession? Yes, people, another edition of Nights in the Roundtable Discussions where we discuss all sports all the time. Got my guy ST with me. How are you doing, sir? All good. I'm all good, man. Back, back, back with free chat, ready to talk some football, you know? Oh, of course, indeed, indeed. Um, people, apologies. There was no footy chat last week. It was it, it was a hectic week. We had NBA talk come back. We had boxing talk come back. Obviously, United were playing Champions League and then Arsenal played in the league. So, unfortunately, we couldn't get everyone together at the same time to do footy chat. But we are back. We've got so much to talk about. Uh, we could possibly have the truth and Mr. K.A. join us. Um, they've got a few things to sort out. Hopefully, they'll be jumping on very soon. But you have... The pleasure of having the company of, of myself and ST. Um, but as usual, before we start, make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Get the likes up, get the subscriptions up, all that good stuff. As I say all the time, share, share, share. We are here, the only channel out there that gives you multiple different sports with so much banter, so much knowledge, so much information and all of that good stuff. And don't forget to join our social media pages as well. Links are in the description. Um, ST. Actually, before I start, we just want to say on behalf of all the men from the channel, our thoughts and prayers go out to all of those in the Ukraine right now. Mm-hmm. All the innocent people that are getting caught up in the mm-hmm. politics and the war that is going on, we mm-hmm. do not condone it whatsoever. It's an unfortunate, um, it's an unfortunate thing that has occurred. We hope that no more innocent innocent blood is spilt. Um, that this can be resolved very quickly, and we go back to a more peaceful time. But the only other thing I will say, people, is do your research. Do your research, gain the knowledge to understand what is really going on. Not going to say any more than that because I'm not trying to get us Mm cancelled. But I will say do your research, um, understand what is really going on. Don't believe the smoke screen. And yeah, but as I said, on behalf of everybody on the channel, thoughts and prayers go out to all those people suffering in Ukraine right now. And hopefully this issue and this war will be resolved very, very um, quickly. Welcome, Mr. K.A., welcome. Hello, sir. Welcome, people. Sorry, I'm a bit late. Oh, what's that shirt you got on? It's absolutely- I don't think he had you. Or is he no, I heard. I heard. That's he heard, heard me, he heard me, he heard me. He heard me. He heard me. <laughs> That's why I'm he lowering it, so you can see it clearly. Yeah, he heard me, he heard me. Um, well, but I'm yeah. not sure if I'd rather be wearing your shirt though. So I'm not. Yeah, gonna, trust me, no, best. no one wants, yeah, no one wants to be wearing our, our shirt right now. Trust me. Um, let's start off with the Carabao Cup final. Okay. Um, obviously, uh, it was Chelsea versus Liverpool um, at Wembley over the weekend. Nil uh, nil after ninety minutes. Nil nil after extra time. Then we got to the penalty shootout, where in which Liverpool um, won 11 10 on penalties. Um, ST, gonna come to you first. Um, Just explain to us what did you think of the game? How do you think the game went? Um, Was it the right team that won? And uh, um, what do you just think of the whole spectacle as a whole? for their first um, trophy in, in of the season to be won? I thought the level of football overall was good from both teams. Um, there were quite a few players that played well. Um, overall, it seems like a weird statement to say, even though I thought that 
Chelsea had the better chances, if you understand what I mean. I think that Liverpool actually played the better football, watching it, watching it from um, personally. I think I do think overall Liverpool, for me, personally deserved to win it. I thought that Liverpool were the ones trying to win. Um, I think that striking was a was an issue in the in the League Cup, especially on the Chelsea sides. I mm. think I thought that both goalkeepers were great, especially Mendy, but a very very good game. Mm. Um, it was a fantastic. It was it was very entertaining to watch. The level of football was really high, and even though to the untrained I nil no the objective of football is obviously to score goals and all that stuff. But if you look deep beyond that, you would see that there was a very good. It was a very good game. Lots of intricate passing. Two very good coaches. A few standout performances. Uh, yeah, man, that's that's where I'm going with it, man. That's why I'm basically summing up like that. No, it's true. Um, I think obviously as a, as a spectacle, I think it was good for a nil nil. Um, Chelsea go three two up in the FA Cup game. Uh, as a spectacle ball, as a nil nil, it was uh, it was a good game, entertaining. Um, became end to it was end to end, and um, with both teams, uh, Chelsea and Liverpool, they had spells. So Chelsea dominated the first fifteen minutes, then Liverpool took over. Same thing in the second half and in the first half, for extra time. It was Chelsea in the second half of extra time. It was Liverpool. And then obviously it culminated in um, it going to a penalty shootout. And obviously in the two previous games, uh, finished uh, 1-1 and 2-2. So it shows how evenly matched both sides were. And it took a penalty shootout to finish the game. Um, Mr. K.A. <sighs> As... We saw Mendy, Edward Mendy, as ST said, he was fantastic in the game. Uh, literally, just scored by the way, 2 1. Pen- oh. James Ward Prowse penalty, if anyone cares. Oh. Ward, Ward, no one cares about that game. <laughs> <laughs> um, Edward Mendy, absolutely fantastic. The reason why it went to extra time and then to penalties, in, in, in my opinion. Um, Mr. KA, why? Would Tuchel think it was appropriate to change his goalkeeper, a goalkeeper that was fantastic in the game, a goalkeeper that just came from winning a penalty shootout, Africa Cup of Nations, to bring on a goalkeeper that was cold, um, wasn't really involved in the game, and quite frankly, was a massive risk. Why would Tuchel have done that? Explain to the people why you believe Tuchel decided to make this decision? Well, it's a weird one because in the past, it's worked for Chelsea. And um, if it worked over the weekend, everyone would have been celebrating how what a a master stroke by Tuchel that was to bring him on in the dying minutes. So um, it is a bit, it's one of those weird ones. If it works, everyone loves it. If it doesn't, everyone thinks you're crazy. So um, it can be harsh in that sense, but it didn't make it. It's something they just didn't have to do. There was no need, really, because as uh, you touched on and many people have touched on, Mendy was outstanding in the game. He was, he was, on, he was like, he, he's probably on a high, thinking that he could save every single penalty, probably, and yeah. then to get pulled off, especially after coming back and proving himself as. A penalty stopper or being able to be influential in a penalty um, competition shootout, he would have been probably hurt to be taken off. And um, it's again, it's weird because it's not just Tuchel who's done it, it's happened in previous management. Mm. Uh, managers have done it. So he, he must be outstanding in, in a sh- training that, that, that three, I think it's three different managers that have done it taking him off so um i think it's just something that was just unnecessary i understood it because it's it's happened in the past and it's worked but there was just no need honestly i just didn't get the urgency or the the timing or anything if you're going to bring him on see i think you're going to do something like that then bring him on at half time of of, um extra time Mm. let him get warmed up bring him on Mm. at the start of extra time let him get into the game. That's half an hour. If it goes to penalties, mm. 
So it's such a weird one how you don't trust your keep a keeper in in a regular football game where you trust him in penalties. It's so, it's such a weird one to me. Even though he's not, um, Chelsea's not the only club to do it. Other clubs have done it in the past as mm. well. But um, Chelsea's the one that's the most famous for doing it because they've had success. So wow. um, yeah, it's just it was just interesting. A fair point. Look, I'd, I'm not a fan of it. Same way I'm not a fan of uh, players being bought on to take just only to take penalties because you're cold, not really involved in the game. Um, you're and the focus is on you, the pressure's on you because you're being brought on for this specific role. And I understand that they're footballers; they should be used to the pressure and whatnot and be able to cope. But when you're brought on for that one thing, we saw it with England in the Euros when man brought on um, players. Especially when they do it in, a, in the last minute of the game. Exactly. <laughs> in, the last, in the last minute of the game. So you no time to touch the ball, no time to try and get warm, no time to take your focus off penalty shootouts. You're literally going on, on there for that. So you're overthinking like you saw Kepa he was there trying to intimidate. And it's like, bro, you are the least intimidating person there is on that football pitch. Now, I don't know what you thought you were doing, but it didn't work. Um, don't get me wrong. The, pen- the level of penalty shootouts from both teams was good. Either sending the keeper the wrong way or like Van Dyke's. Oh, that's was what I was about to say. Oh, because okay. do you know why? Because Keppel was standing on that side and he still got nowhere near it. He put like Kepa was standing on that side of the goal. He wasn't standing in the middle. He was standing on that side of the goal. And, and Trent as well. Got, huh? Trent as well. Yeah, and still got nowhere near yeah, it, bro. Like, bro. there was some fantastic penalties there. Fabinho's the, penalty what? was stupid, bro. Who? Fabinho. Oh, Fabinho. But, that's, bro, bro, but the thing is, remember, he used to take penalties for Monaco, so yeah, he's a good yeah, penalty yeah. taker. Yeah. Um, And obviously, Kepa got the hand to Canate's one, but then the pressure... Like, as a goalkeeper, it's nuts because he's been bought on. Like, the only... You could, you're either a hero or you're nothing when you're bought on for penalties as a goalkeeper until you go through the f- first 10 plays and then it's down to you. It's very rare that goalkeepers become villains in a penalty shootout and it just so happens it got to him. Man booted that ball to Timbuktu, bruv. Uh, uh, it that <laughs> Wembley way, bruv. It's in uh, Austin, le- right le- Legend has it that uh, it's uh, still rising. <laughs> Well, the ball's in housing as we speak. Nah, do you know what? I saw a picture on social media that, that some kid caught it and um, it's in someone's house. <laughs> they didn't give it back. It, like, the Listen, bit to go. It's nuts. It is nuts. And it's unfortunate for Kepa, but you live by the sword, you die by the sword. You're known for that. Two show, obviously, it's a trophy that they haven't won. Um, first trophy up the grounds. Obviously, it's not the most important trophy of the season, but it's a trophy nonetheless that could set you up for the rest of the season. They haven't won it and they just have to move on from it. And moving on from it, we will mention Liverpool in a, a, a little bit later on, but moving on from it, since then, it's just been a roller coaster with Chelsea because obviously it was will he sell, won't he sell, obviously what's happening in Ukraine right now, the sanctions that are going on, obviously Roman's involved um, in them trying to sanction certain um, Russian business owners in the United Kingdom. Um, So it was will he, won't he, will he, won't he, and it has been confirmed as of a few hours ago that he has agreed that he will sell Chelsea Football Club. This is um, Roman Abramovich, right? Yeah, Abramovich. yeah Roman. Okay. Um, it, he said that it's, it's looking, the, the, the price he's looking at is three billion mm-hmm. for the football club. Um, he has said that it's time for him. I'm just paraphrasing here, people. If you want the statement, go on certain um, apps or on the internet, you'll find it. Uh, basically, he said that it's time to part ways with Chelsea. Um, it's an amazing time there, but obviously with what's going on, it's in the club's best interest if he sells. Um, obviously, I said $3 billion is the number that he's looking for. He doesn't want any loans being paid back because Chelsea do owe him money, but he's like, it's not about the money. It never has been about the money. Um, and that any uh, any 
any what any green any plus that he gets from selling a football club will go to a Ukraine foundation, which will be given to the people that have suffered in Ukraine. Um, probably, obviously, obviously, he wants it as soon as possible. But any money that he gets, that's profit, will go to Ukraine and a foundation. Uh, he, to- I think he said in a statement. Sorry to interrupt. That um, he actually doesn't want it to be rushed. He wants it to go through the full due process. And oh yeah, yeah. Properly. So it's, it, it won't be a quick sell. He he, it won't be a quick sell. This and the thing is, with selling a football club, it's never easy. So it's one of them ones where this could take months. It could even take a year for him to sell if he he needs the right buyer. I think he's turned down. A uh, third party bid already for two point five billion. Allegedly, um, there's a Swiss, um, there's a Swiss billionaire that's interested in buying Chelsea Football Club right now. And but also, there's is... a British one as well, a British oh, okay. billionaire. Okay, but interested. that is that is the state of play at Chelsea Football Club right now. My question is, right? I'm not trying to get into the politics of what is going on. But, ST, for you, right, is yeah. this the right decision for all parties involved? Oh, uh, I mean, for Roman it is. I mean, they're uh, not really getting into too much political details. They were about to freeze the guy's assets. So what's the best way to do is get one of the main assets off the table and still recuperate the money. And this is the best way for Chelsea, mm-hmm. unless it depends, it really depends on what sort of person they get. If they, because Roman Abramovich, one thing I will say about him, he wanted the football guard to be successful on and off the pitch. And a lot of, a lot of uh, these uh, owners, especially American owners that are in the Premier League already really, really care about the business side of it. Roman wants to win the Champions League. He wants to win everything. It's going to be very, very difficult to find someone like that unless the club have been looking around and they have probably been asking the club who want, and what sort of person they want. Mm-hmm. So I'd say for Roman, it's the best interest. I generally do worry about Chelsea if I was a Chelsea fan depending on what sort of club they and um, sort of um, owner they're getting. Because then what happens is that will the owners look to buy certain players? Will they implement directors of footballs and stuff like that? Will they implement someone who knows football instead of focusing on their bank? So, in short, Roman did the right thing for himself and his company. But for his... But for Chelsea, this could be Chelsea's demise. Um, and I, I love I, it. I, I mean, I wouldn't go that far. Not demise. Yeah, that. Demise, <laughs> demise, <man. laughs> I mean, I mean, that's what I would hope for. But I, hope I wouldn't so. go that far. Um, and welcome, Truth. Um, What's going on? Um, welcome. Uh, just joining us. Um, I'm going to throw it to, throw for the next question to you. Um, look. For Chelsea, as as St said, will they get someone in that is um, a football person, or will it be a case of Roman just saying, you know what, right? We're gonna go through the process, but in realistically, the quicker he gets a sale through, the better it is for him in terms of his brand, in terms of Chelsea Football Club, and all the sanctions that come along with it um do you think that this is something that can be resolved within a couple of weeks or months or could this potentially drag on for a year or two like we've seen with newcastle um just to bring up a recent team it's a hard one because it's hard to sell these big clubs anymore because we're talking about buying them for I think Chelsea said they won't sell for anything less than three billion Mm. and no one is actually really willing to part with that kind of money because it's hard to do that and then still run a football club um to his to his highest level that's three billion like apart from the Saudis even they even they're you know not really looking to or they would have come in and bought you know a team like Arsenal a team like United a long time ago but um 
So this may drag on for a little bit. I'm even surprised that that Swiss guy came up with 2.5 because, you know, that's it's, it's steep money. It's steep money. And if you're, you know, if you've got people willing to spend that much, you've got to question how they're going to finance the running of the club after that. Um, so they, it's a tough, messy situation that I don't really think is as clear cut as, oh, we're just going to sell the club. We're going to mm. get a buy and that's it. Um, as I said, as you saw with Newcastle, remember it's 400 million, 400 million is a vast different, <laughs> vastly different from 3 billion. You know, that's when you start entering the billion, it's like, whoa. So, it's true. I, I don't, I, I don't personally know how in the short term they're going to manage to do a quick sell, to be honest. Um, Abramovich is doing the right thing in terms of uh, trying to get the club into the hands of a trustee or a charity fund, so that way his funds don't get frozen and sanctioned and whatnot. So he's doing the right thing in terms of that. But you know, Chelsea fan, this is what happens when you <laughs> when you get an owner that's got blood, that's money, he's got their blood in it. Like, oh, why isn't you. Cooking with Rash on this channel? He's, he needs to be honest, man. This. The reason why I didn't sell Cooking with Rash is because he's probably watching the game that's just finished right now. Chelsea won three two, so we've never been on. That's why um, that's why cooking Rash Rash wasn't wasn't on um today because I knew you'd be watching the Chelsea game. Mm-hmm. Um but <sighs> Mr. K8, right? In terms of on the pitch, obviously we just obviously as I just said, Chelsea just won 3-2, they're through to the next round of the FA Cup, made it difficult indeed. But in terms of on the pitch, obviously players are in a bubble, they don't really know what's going on, but we saw from Tuchel, people were calling it a meltdown. I don't, it wasn't a meltdown. I applaud him for basically telling the journalist, Bridget, stop asking me the question. I don't fucking know. And even if I did know, I still wouldn't tell you. So that's basically what he said. I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what Tuchel said to the journalist. But in terms of on the field, how much of an effect do you think the sale of Chelsea Football Club, obviously, the constant links with Roman and 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 he who shall not be named, um, and what's going on with Russia? People saying, even though Roman has said this, um, said this, uh, sent this letter out and said this is what I want to do with the club for the fans set up the Ukraine Foundation. People still want him to condemn what's going on right now. Um, how much of an effect do you think this is going to have on the players and the manager of Chelsea Football Club? Um, I think it will have an effect on the club and the culture. He's been there for like 20 years now, which it doesn't feel that long, but he's been there for a while. And um, he's brought success to the club. He's changed the culture. Um, as uh, ST said earlier on, he's a, he was a footballing man. He cared about the game. He wasn't like some owners that just care about the, the their bottom line and some profits. So um, I think it could affect the club, especially... And again, just to echo some of what um, ST said about the people that come in with this new owner, like with directors of football, etc. How well they know the game and how well they know how to run the club. Because not every running a sports team is different from running a business. Even though you're a successful businessman uh, or woman to um, accumulate that kind of money, it's not the same. Because in sports, though it generates a lot of money, it takes a lot of money to also run a club as well. So. I think it will affect them. Um, I think it may affect the players more than it does the managers because uh, managers are there for like two, three years at a time uh, where a lot of those someone players have been there for five, ten years. So they they would have met Roman, they would have had good relationships with him. So um, I think it will affect the, the culture. Um, I don't know how much it will affect the on-field performance. I think... Um, it won't affect it that much. I think Chelsea already having issues um, or already, already um, playing the way they play. And I think once you step on the field, um, your mentality is your focus on the team. I don't think it affects them one bit, to be honest, um, in terms of their players' performance. Because yeah, I don't think it will either. No. They, like, when you've got those clubs that's got beer mercs in it, they don't care. <laughs> as, long as, that, as long as that money's going into their account, they don't care. What they're looking at is like, what they're looking at, they're like, oh, crap. Roman, your funds about to get frozen. The players were probably saying, "Look, we want our dough, so 
<laughs> you have to get <laughs> probably, one way or the other. Yeah, exactly. Like, they're the ones that's probably telling Roman to sell up so they can still get their dough, man. These guys are these guys are max, man. Like teams like Man City and Chelsea, they're just a bunch of mad players for them, so it's not going to affect them too too much. The only thing that's going to start to affect them is if, is if the culture um starts to change in terms of who's running the club. Because as much as Roman was a hatchet man, as much as he was an axe man, he was an axe man for success. You know, you could get owners like, you know, like we had Cronkays or Man United and the Glazers that are going to be like, oh, uh, we're just happy just making a profit. Effort goes on the pitch and that, that might, you know, drift on down to the players. But that, that's going to come later down the line. In terms of short term, it's not going to affect these max one bit, man. Fair, fair enough, fair enough. And people will see what happens in the roller coaster that is Chelsea Football Club and with their own Roman, Roman, Roman Abramovich. Um, truth quickly, obviously, there was another team in the Carabao Cup final, Liverpool, the team that won. Obviously, it's their first trophy in the bank. Um, League Cup, another piece of silverware for Klopp and his boys. Um, unbeaten in their last 13 games in all competitions now. Um, in terms of winning the league, I mean, six points behind off City with a game in hand. In two? terms of win... Hmm? Is there two games in hand? No, just the one. Oh, just the one? Okay. Yeah, just the one. Um, in terms of the League Cup winning it, is that going to be the springboard? Because right now, the quadruple is on for Liverpool right now. Is that the springboard for them to now go on and say, because they're 2-0 up in the FA Cup right now, obviously 2-0 up in the first leg against Inter Milan. Obviously, if they win their game in hand, that's three points. The pressure's on Man City. Are we looking at Liverpool, are we looking at Liverpool on the brink of having a special season? Or is it there's just too long to go right now to say what they're going to end up come um, the end of May? Once you start looking at that quadruple, things kind of unravel very quickly. Um, it's an impossible feat for me. Once, yeah, sorry, it's an it's an impossible feat for me because better teams than this level, better squads than this Liverpool squad have tried to try to do the quadruple, and have come up short, especially when they start thinking about it. So I, Klopp's right, I'm not going to start looking at the quadruple just because you won the Carabao Cup. Take it one trophy at a time. In fact, I'll say focus on one trophy at a time because as good as their team is, it's not huge outside the first 11. Outside the first 11, I know you got Diaz, um, Jota, uh, Firmino can interchange, um, Canate. That's mm. about it. You know, that's about it. Outside that is, is, is very average in terms of the squad. And to compete on three fronts is going to take a hell of a lot out of them especially like you can see Salah is already looking a bit jaded as well and the, <laughs> the longer they go on they're just gonna the more tired they're gonna get especially in three competitions saying three times um a week yeah uh a special season for them would be a special season for them would just be winning that Premier League again to be honest because that was what I swear that was higher up as 20 each <laughs> with United <laughs> Yeah, it would. Yes, I, I know for a lot of Liverpool fans, and I know a lot of Liverpool fans saying they've already won six Champions League, they're already more successful English coming in Champions League. Yes, winning the another one would be extra special, but tying that league trophy with United would be the one for them because, you know, next few seasons they could go and start being and literally call themselves the most successful club in England and the biggest club in England as well. So, yeah, a special season though would just be the Premier League. They have to be very lucky to get the quadruple. That's mm. what I think. Uh, that luck, luck has to be on the side to get the quadruple. That, that's what it is. Mr. KA, you changing your mind? You uh, you still sticking with City for the league, or are you are you are you, are you swaying towards the truth and joining them on the Liverpool bandwagon? What's your what's your, what's your thoughts? No, I st- I still have City so you holding died. out. <laughs> Did you say so? I didn't even catch what you said. said you... To the city till you die, yeah. Not gonna change it. Well, for the yeah, for the season, yeah, for this league cup city. Mm. Fair enough. Um, people will see what happens. It's gonna be a great um title race. Obviously, we've got a title race now on our hands, so we'll see what happens between Liverpool and Man City. I think we've all ruled out Chelsea 
as it is. Um, Chelsea could be getting dragged into the top four race with Arsenal at this point. Um, but yeah, we shall and watch this and, well, and West Ham. <laughs> and we shall watch this space. Um... <laughs> And United. Oh, just, just start talking in it. And United. Oh, just start talking in it. Where to begin, man? Yeah. Where to begin? Let me start with ST. Uh, let me start with ST because let's okay. let, let TJ stew a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so. CR7. Oh. No, 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 no. Don't let's, let's start with players because we'll, we'll I'm get starting there. with players. No, 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 no. No, I'm no, no. no. But we'll get, but we'll get there. I'm, because no. I'm, I'm, I'm personally looking at the table and seeing United in that top four, top four place. That's all I'm seeing. No, I ain't I'm seeing nothing else. Players. I'm starting I'm with nothing players. else. I'm starting with players today, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Because hold on, no, you guys no. drew at um at Watford's uh sandwich in between. I think. What was the result before that? You beat Leeds. Sandwich in between was a result, a very good result at Atletico. I say good result. I emphasize results. It wasn't a good performance. performance. But, mm-hmm. I'm gonna, but I'm going to tell you this, yeah, and this is why I'm saying this to players as well. Because since Ragnik has come here, the yeah. actual level of football and patterns has been better yeah. than what it was. Yeah. The issue is now that we're not finishing our chances. Man United are now averaging more chances. If we yeah. had... Mr. Mr. Gel time and <laughs> and Martial back exactly here. yeah those and playing in this system we'd be we'd yeah. be we'd be higher up and we'd be scoring more goals I think but so you know it so, is, so why is that so why are you labeling CR7 CR37 yeah because he's shit bro I'm no dead. no no I'm not he's gonna dead. have that he's, he's I'm not he's gonna have that He's when he's scoring, you're all there he's going, I'm you, honest. You. I don't do that. I don't do that. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. Washed. All of you. He's washed. He's you're dead. dead. You can't Wait, you're, 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 you're blaming the that a tired 37-year-old isn't finishing chances when yes, you've got if... people unavailable like Edison, I'm going on holiday. Oh, for oh he's the worst. And, Listen, he's addicted and, as well. But he's and... not playing. <laughs> But he's not playing. The thing is, yeah, I agree with you. Like, Edison Cavani is not um, is out here enjoying the sun and beach and everything, but yeah. he's not playing. Mm. So even though I want him out of the club, he's not playing at all. So he's not affecting the team. Yeah. It's it's um it's that elf Bruno. It's <laughs> star thirty seven. It's that it's it's the dinner lady, Rashford, not taking their chances. <laughs> It's them. I'm sorry. It's them three. I'm mean, I having to back him. I'm not even blaming McTominay and all them man there because them man are doing their jobs. Man United are not conceding goals. Mm. That's not the issue. We're not really conceding a lot of goals. It's the fact yeah. that we're not scoring, and we've had opportunities to win the whole ma- the all the matches. Yeah, and we haven't done it because of our strikers have missed many chances. If that was Martial getting all those chances and missing. Remember, this fan base would have a whole goal at everybody. You'd be cussing Martial saying that, oh, he doesn't know how to finish. Because it's CR, CR Paralympics 37, yeah? Uh, <laughs> that he oh, can't, score, like, he can't, like, it's because of him, yeah? Because he does all these things, he can't score his goals. Nah, I'm not having it. And you see but, Bruno, that elf, that, that big-eared freak. I'm telling you, I'm, uh, I'm saying though, what my my from watching the specifically specifically watching the Watford game, yeah. You guys had a good first half. We did. You, you had a good first half. Second half, not so much. I, what you guys are struggling in, is two things: mentality, and you know, what do you call it? Blue pill United, because they can't mm. keep it up. Yeah. <laughs> they can't yeah. keep up for the yeah. full 90 so the first half was good second half they weren't creating as good as um chances so the thing what you guys have to do especially with these lower um these lower table sides you just have to keep on battering the door in that second half you guys start battering the door and you know Watford looked comfortable quite um, um in that second half a lot of the time so this is why I don't want to fully put blame on you know the likes of Bruno the likes of um, the likes of Ronaldo, because it's not consistent. It's not all the way through, and Ronaldo's just played too much, too many games. Played too many games for a thirty-seven-year-old. 
I Same agree, way. but we have to, we have to like, but there are chances he should be scoring. I'll be honest. I know, I know. If, if, if Ronaldo scores the chances, and he's not getting chances late, he's getting chances early. If Ronaldo or Bruno or who, those three who've been missing the chances take their chances, the game is a lot more comfortable for Man United to manage. If you know what I mean? Even though Man United have been struggling in the second half, and I do agree with that, and that yeah. is a bit for the mentality, there is less pressure us scoring first, if you understand what I mean. It sets the tone for the rest of the match. P- TJ, this is, but this is my thought process. As good as you guys are seemingly playing, mm-hmm. I don't actually think you guys are playing 50% better. I think you guys are playing more like 10% better. Mm. And eventually, you take it from an Arsenal fan. Huh? Yeah. I think it's about, I think personally, it's about 20 or 30% better. Because the, the, the reason I say that is because the competition that you guys have played haven't been great. They've let you guys play. You guys mm-hmm. enjoy playing Leeds. Burnley um, sat back. Um, Watford sat back. When you guys actually came up against, I say half decent because Atletico are fifth in their league and having a horrible season. Mm-hmm. They peppered you. They ripped you guys apart. But that being said, the, the goal that United scored was good. So, mm. my oh, thing sorry. is... Sorry to disturb you, Truth, yeah. Oh, sorry yeah. to cut in, but I was going to say that you've mentioned the fact that these teams were sitting back. Like, re- Remember when we were complaining that we were struggling to break down teams yeah. when we were sitting back? Yeah. Now we're starting to actually get chances from teams sitting back. That's mm. why I'm getting the issue. So okay, that's your improvement. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? So I understand yeah. you're right. But that's that's why I'm blaming the players because now you have no excuse. You're now breaking down teams who are yeah. having a low block. So it's not like you can't play under a low block. It's the people that are in front are not finishing their jobs. If I'm a, If I'm a defender... And looking at this, because Man United haven't really been conceding m- many goals like um, recently, I'd yeah. be looking at my f- I'd be looking at my forwards and be like, "What? What are you doing?" Like, so, so I pose to my question, TJ, what, what on, TJ? is the answer? <laughs> the, an- <laughs> <laughs> the answer is many things. The answer could be. The, the 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 prime answer, the answer that everybody wants is get the glazers out and get a football in person and not going to happen. We know that. Um, yeah. Answer is get a technical director of football in. Um, obviously, yeah. Ragnar's going to move upstairs. We'll see what happens with the new manager. Cool, fair yeah. enough. The answer in the short term is there's not much more Ragnar can do with what he's got. Um, he's in a very similar situation to what Conte's in right now where what he's got isn't good enough. Um, bro, let's just blow it up and start again. It literally is blow it up and start again um, in terms of forward thinking into the next two to three seasons. In this short term, as in, oh, the next game and the game after that, there is nothing more Ragnik can do what... Uh, could he change the system and try and do a temporary free at the back? Wouldn't work. I don't think it would work. We haven't got the, we have the place to facilitate that, but we'd end up losing something if we do that. Um, yeah. Changing the personnel. Unfortunately, there's only so much he can change in the defence. Yes, he can. In the midfield, yes, he can. The front line, no, he really can't. There's not much he can do with it. Yeah. So it's one of them ones where... Ragnik right now, present day, there's not much else he can do in the future. It's blow it up, start again, lead into the primary goal, which is get the Glazers out of the football club, get footballing people in and trying to build something so that we can become successful again. It's as simple as that. I can't I can't I can't sum it up any more differently than that. Let's talk about next month. Well, next month, this month. Um we are talking about, they call it March Madness. Next four fixtures, uh, Mr. K.A. Um, Man City. Is it Spurs or Man City? City, Spurs, Spurs Liverpool and... Liverpool. Um, sandwich in between, sandwich in between that is a tag and uh, Atletico. Mm-hmm. And then even April, it doesn't get any easier because you got Leicester and Everton away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So... 
you're looking at those next six fixtures, a huge month. Mm -hmm. Huge month. I personally believe if United can get a result in any one of those games, you guys have the squad capable of turning it on and securing that top four just because of the quality. Um, K.A., do you believe that United could come out of these next few fixtures unscathed? And be again, Man City, Tottenham, Atletico, Liverpool. I, I don't think they will, you know. I think they're going to struggle because the way they, they're, they're going into a tough run of fixtures. We just named all the teams they're going to be playing. And um, mm-hmm. the way that they have been playing now, yeah. as we've said before in the past, as we've said just now in the podcast, they can't put together a full 90 minutes. As you said, they can't keep it up. They can't... Um, and the thing is, Ragnick's may been making changes, but I think um, the four-three-three that he's implemented is is kind of working. He's getting Bruno a bit more involved, but he's I think he's chopping and changing a bit too much with the wing backs. I think he needs to, and uh, even when he played Matic um, last game, I think he needs to settle on the eleven. And um, even though it's Man United haven't really got the players to be doing what he wants to do. I think he needs to stick with an 11. And I think that may be the final thing that could help him um, breed a bit of consistency, um, breed a bit of familiar, familiarity with um, the style of playing away of like the way he wants to play and sort of get some sort of momentum going. I think that could help, but you can't really see much he can do really. But I, it is I, look tough. It. It is I look tough. at it and you're thinking Man City haven't played good for two games. Can no. they catch them cold? No. Tottenham. Come on, it's Tottenham. It's, it, Atletico. No. Atletico are not are not great. Atletico are not great. No. I don't think I don't think they can. I don't think they can really. I can't. I don't you really know, can switch it on. If 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 United, I, but, but they have. United, but as you said, they've been playing. Um, they've been playing better. Me personally, they have been playing better. No, I agree with that. Yeah, they have been playing better. In the next six games, if United yeah. get four points, I'll be surprised. Yeah, they have been playing better. <laughs> I, look, I, I honestly believe that... Apart from, obviously, the Atletico one, you can't get points for it. But the next five <laughs> games in the league, if United get no. four points, I'll be surprised. You can I beat Everton. I, 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 I can not, see them. We're, we're, I can we're see not beating, them getting a result at City. We're not, no. And I'll tell you, I can explain to you why we won't get a you result can't at explain City. Why. Why? I can. I can very simply, very simply. That's a derby, though. Anything can happen in a derby. It's, it's a derby. Anything can happen. Remember, City haven't beaten us at home since, I think, 2018. Something like that, right? The reason why we will not get a result at Manchester City, there's two reasons. Number one, the most important player in the fixture against Manchester City is in Seville right now. That's the first reason why we won't be getting a result. The the most important player in a fixture 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 against Manchester City it, it, Manchester City <laughs> is in Seville, right? The most important player man, in the city man, is, right man, 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 like Daniel J. Man, 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 Daniel Hammer is all right. <laughs> the second thing, so when you take Martial out of that team, that's two things you take out: a, the pace on the counter attack, and b, the only player in this football club that can hold up a fucking football. Right? That's the first thing. We saw what Sugar Kane did to Manchester City. That's the similar thing that Martial does. So probably doesn't have the passing range that no, uh, yeah, Sugar yeah, Kane has. Don't even, co- don't even compare one of the greatest uh-uh. ever Premier League performances to something Martial has never done in his Hold career. Hold on. Martial has done it back-to-back away at Man City. And so Josh, I don't know what you're talking about. No, 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 uh, he's done it, he's done it back-to-back against Kane, away at Man City. Kane, back-to-back. Kane's performance was one of the best Premier League performances I've ever seen. Of that's course me it saying was. It. Of course, of course it was. That, of course, Marshall. the only difference between Sugar Kane's performance and Martial's is that Sugar Kane got the two goals. There's been no difference apart from that. None whatsoever. Because Tony been doing that against uh, Man City. In the last fixture away, mm-hmm. the first five minutes, what does Tony do? Bad man up. Wins a penalty straight away. Yeah, we go one nil up. Right? He's, his influence in the Manchester City game in terms of Dropping deep, bringing people into play and holding up the football is one of the most important assets we have against Manchester City. Mm -hmm. The second reason why we will not beat City is because we will have absolutely no raw, raw pace on the counter-attack. Reason being is that, obviously, Daniel James has been sold to Leeds. He's got raw pace. Trafford is fucking awful so he's not going to play if he does 
it's pointless because he can't even run away from his mum right now. This guy says so there pace. is no point in the Sancho, banging Rashford in the team. Sancho, Rash, Sancho, Sancho, is, Sancho has a deep, Rashford. No, no. Sancho, right, is pace. He can't get away. We saw him struggling, um, struggle to get away from. I um, um, can't remember who was the uh, fullback at Burnley. He is very intricate deep, and he's though. tricky and he's got a good amount of pace, not the pace to get away from players. Elanga, another one, hasn't really got the raw pace to get away from players. Mm -hmm. You are forgetting that it's the raw pace that you need. They're coming up against Kyle Walker and Jao Cancelo. Yeah, Jao Cancelo's not the quickest. We understand that, but he's got enough pace to get back. And Kyle Walker is one of the quickest fullbacks in the Premier League. So the only way you're doing him is with that raw place. And let's not forget, as I said, the most important player is in Seville. So who's going to be playing through the middle? CPR7, who goes for a <laughs> run and then needs his, and, and, and then needs some gas and air after that. So he's not counter-attacking, right? So, they, so we are constantly going to be cocooned in our own half, not being able to get out. Right, it's as simple as that. That is what those are the two reasons why we're not getting a result against Manchester City. Mm -hmm. The most we can hope for is that we can get a nil-nil draw, and we would need an out absolutely outstanding performance from all of our defenders plus McFred to try and get that result. Which I think you can get because as we've seen with City recently, the lack of striker is starting to hurt them because mm -hmm. you should be a little bit confident that okay if you're a taxi you might put yourselves in trouble yeah. if you defend against them you're gonna yeah. have the boy in whipping in 20 crosses to absolutely nobody no one is winning any no city players winning anything in that box my, um my issue is i agree with you mm. if he plays the correct back four so Wan Bissaka has to play in this game because we know when Wan Bissaka plays, when Wan, oh, no, 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 when Wan Bissaka play, when Wan Bissaka plays, Sterling don't do shit. So that's the first thing, right? In terms of left back, Tellez has to play. Fat Shaw cannot play, right? In terms of centre backs, Linda it has to be Linda. It has to be Varane. It can't I be anyone agree. else. I obviously agree with that. I'm unsure about the full backs. I I don't think you play this Wan Bissaka. I don't think his head is You have made. to, because you have to, because you got to remember, even if we want to attack City, they're still going to have most of the ball. Dallow's not a good defender. The one thing I can guarantee with Wamba Saka is Sterling will be non-existent in this game mm -hmm. if Wamba Saka plays. So that suits me fine. Fat Shaw's the one that can't play. He cannot play. You're forgetting, the the Fridjo well, Coles back, cannot though. play either. You're forgetting Grealish is back. Um, City's got options, I think. Sterling's yeah, is, but is no, far Sterling from will the... start. Sterling, I think Sterling scored five Sterling's in the last eight or well, something so or nine start. or something like that. So Sterling will start. Greenish causes a bigger problem, but I don't think he'll start the game. Uh, my issue is the other side, having um, Mares or Foden up against Fat Shaw. He cannot start. The fridge on toes cannot start. If we play that back four that I said, I would yeah. have more confidence that we can try and get it, draw out the result. But I know yeah. what's going to happen. Maguire's going to play. Luke Shaw's going to play. It's a done deal after that. Because they are they are awful. Awful, awful, awful. And I don't know why. I don't know who's spoken to Ragnick. I don't know what it is. I don't know if Darren Fletcher's basically came and said to him, if you carry on playing Tellez, you're not getting a technical director's role. That's why he's brought Fat Shaw back into the team. Because this youth should not be playing. He needs to be on a treadmill. That's what he needs to be doing, right? <laughs> That's where he needs to be. The fridge on toes needs to go back to Greece and go and do some jail time. These players should not be playing at this football club, especially in the magnitude of this game, of which it is. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. City are going for the title. Cool, fair enough. But it's still a Manchester derby. Like, if you play those is, two in no, the back is, four, nothing's going to happen. For me, it's a huge game because if United get a result, I think that's it. Your team switches mentality. I think Ronaldo scores in this game, your team he's switches not. mentality. He's not. He's not. If he scores he's in this not. game, man even scored if he scores one goal, a penalty. Man scored one goal in 2022. We're now, penalty, we're now in March. Even if he scores a penalty. We're now in March. He scored one goal in 2022. We're now in March. That's crazy. But like, even if he scores a pen, it's, it's trust me. Who's for winning me, the this, penalty? It, How uh, are we going to get close to Man City's box? Who's winning the penalty? What? Unless Nabil wins the penalty. No one's not winning no penalty. Elanga, the main man. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Elanga, Elanga, Elanga's decent. He's a decent young player. I um, think that, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I think Sancho and Elanga offer enough on either, on either nah. wing. To cause I think I think Sancho could cause 
Jao Cancelo problems, but Carl against Walker, Carl Walker, enough. it's very yeah. rare. To, it's very hard to cause Carl Walker problems because I even would, if you get past him, he's still got the pace to get for, back. For me, for me, you need to this game. You need to drop Bruno. Yep, hundred percent. You play, you play Pogba further yep. forward. Yep, I agree. I agree. If, it's not going to happen, if, but I agree. Yeah, I don't think Cavani. If Cavani is fit, you play I'd Cavani. Do that as well. I do or, that as well. Yeah. Unfortunately, or you play Rashford. The thing is, the thing is, I the thing is, right? You can't. You just can't. You can't. He's he's he he he's so bad right now that you I just know. can't. The but you, then so is Ronaldo. Bro, the you the you is scared of the football. The you is so scared is of the Ronaldo. football. But with 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 with, uh, with, with CPR seven, right? And leaves Rashford off as you Bro, pace. I, 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 you know what? Play false nine. Play Lingard. Play false nine. <laughs> play Lingard. Play Lingard. Bro, play Lingard. Jesse. Play Lingard. You have to. You have to. Listen. I, you have to. No, play no, Lingard no, in the no. false nine. Put Jesse Sancho hasn't, Jesse hasn't played enough. Now, put, play, you have to. I don't. There's n- none of them. I don't want uh, Bruno. I don't want to see Cristiano. I don't want to see Rashford. I don't want to see Maguire. I don't want to see Luke Shaw. I don't want to see that. Like, I don't want to see any of these players. I don't like. They are. They. They. They are criminals. Absolute criminals, bro. Man's got one goal in 2022. Two in his last ten games, bro. Bro. He's a se- he's taking the second most amount of shots in the Premier League, and he's only got nine goals to show for it. Nine. How do you have, have 79 shots and you only got nine goals to show for it? Bruno, 64 shots, nine goals to show for it. Let me hold on. Let me let me tell you something. Let me let me give you a quick stat. Because <laughs> no, I, I need to get it. Bro, Watford, 22 shots, three on target. Southampton, all right, 12 shots, eight on target. Cool. Burnley, 22 shots. Five on target. Middlesbrough, 30 shots, nine on target. Yeah. Bro, these guys are awful. They're yeah. awful. And the, the penalties have dried up, so Bruno can't do nothing. Man's missing sitters, bro. One-on-ones. Man's hitting everything apart from the back of the net. Cristiano and Ronaldo soaking because he, only, he, because he can't score. Like, bro, these guys need to go. And until they go, United ain't going nowhere. All you not need to do is play my video when he first came in because I was the only one that wasn't wanking in socks when he came into the football club. Because well. I knew, I, I knew well. what he was going to do. And the biggest joke is he's actually done worse. <laughs> he's actually yeah. done worse than what I predicted. Yeah. <laughs> like, honestly, but bro, it's a Manchester derby. We've got ST and I got to hold on to the fact that we haven't beaten the, they haven't beaten us at home since 2018. Bro, um, we've got pace on the counter attack. Stranger things have happened, and, and the fact that the way Man City are playing should give you guys hope. And the fact is, for me, this game is vital because you beat City. That for me, that guaranteed you guys top four because I still believe this United squad can turn it on. Not only because you guys can turn it on, beating City, you'll turn it on. Tottenham. So I don't even regard Tottenham as a team. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, even, regard, I don't even regard Tottenham as a football team. What they're doing to my boy X is just criminal. Like the guy, the guy I'm thinking of calling the suicide hotline. Like just yeah, the man on his birthday as well. Tell him to, so to go make sure they, they got an iron X. But um, yes, yeah, so I don't regard Tottenham as a team. Atletico, trust me, they're going to be a different animal yeah. away from yeah. home. 100%. As in, they're gonna you get you, you your crowd will blow Atletico over. Nah. Because they're mentally fragile, they are weak, they, they're not the same team people think they are. They're, they're fifth in the thing for a reason. Bam, Barcelona on top of them. Barcelona are on but top Abba, of them. But pulling up trees out there at the moment, bro. Uh, Barcelona no, they were, they were like, and Traore as well. They were like ten points away. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. Atletico I know. are there for a reason. Um but United the are the game, team, United is the type of team that will mess it up. Liverpool, maybe, but I think the Man City game and the Tottenham game, you need to look at them and the Atletico game as the game to change your season. If after these next three games, if they're all losses or there's one draw or something, then yeah, I think Listen, season's over for you guys. As I, as I said, but as I said that there should be optimism games, heading into the, this. The, 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 fir- the first derby. four games, we'll probably get one point out of those four games and, no. and out the Champions League because it's United. It's, it's, I, it's United. 
I can see four points and in the Champions League being Atletico. And then you guys are prime. I'd say, I'd say I'd say one point, but I do see us being Atletico. I don't think Atletico is good as they are. Used to. If you've been watching Spanish football, you know they're not yeah. as good. I know. I know you guys, I, 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 I know. But you guys are scared. You guys are scared of going away at home it's, when the crowd is. It's because we don't trust Man United, man. Can no, you no trust one. The, no, you, you can't trust, trust them. You, no so, one can trust Man United, so, bro. So prediction for the rest of the season. Let me start with Ka. United, can they get top four? No, I'm sticking with my team. As I've said all season, Arsenal are going to get the fourth spot. ST? No, my United would be fifth. Are you giving up on the goals? Um, I'm big, I don't see it, to be honest. I feel like, I do feel like you guys are the favourites. You, yeah, I think, I think Arsenal might shade it this year. I think you guys are more of a team. <laughs> nah, no chance. No chance. Arsenal third, Chelsea fourth, Tottenham fifth, fifth, West Ham sixth, United if, seventh. If United didn't have um, Chelsea if fourth, United, if United didn't have over forty points, TJ would have said they're getting relegated. Yeah, yeah. literally, literally, bro. You can't, you can't <laughs> trust these players, bro. You can't, you um, can't trust these players. I'm, I'm gonna refer judgment to after these, after this next four games because, um, as I said. I think these games, I think the City game is vital. I think they get any result from that. They blow away Tottenham. Um, if they get through against Atletico, who knows what can happen against Liverpool. But once you get those two games out of the way, we our run is still way too way too hard to say that we we've, we've got top four. Our run is way too hard. Our games in hand is way too hard. Chelsea, Liverpool, um, Tottenham. Yes. Yeah. I only uh, say Spurs because it's a derby, not because they're not because they're any good. Literally, only because it's, it's, it's a derby. That's listen, it, like, Conte, Conte don't even rate his team, so how can that's you? That's what I'm saying. Like, like, like Spurs, Spurs don't even Spurs don't even care. They'll be out of the top four race here. They just will want to win that game just because it's a derby. And that's that's the most Spurs, and and they'll flipping celebrate like they won a trophy because they can't win anything else. <laughs> Oh uh, dear, but um, yeah, people, we shall see. It's a big game of the weekend, the Manchester Derby. We'll see yep. what happens in, in that. Unfortunately, we don't have time to talk Spurs. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. let's, let's not guys, talk you guys rambled. Stop going today. You <laughs> rambled on about United. It was a really but, but, but obviously, a shout out to my guy X, bro. Like, <laughs> it's, his bir- it's his birthday and he's stressing like this. What? Like- what? Dave. <laughs> Dave, 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 Dave. I was actually there was tears in my eyes here when I had to keep repeating it. Man, man looked at the screen and they put on the UK. They put on BBC News. Oh <laughs> man, but yeah, um, people over to friend predictions. Oh. I've been waiting for this with Norwich. I've been two one in the Liverpool this. game. Uh, people, I've been waiting for no, no, obviously. Two, Obviously, um, people all. on prem predictions. Obviously, oh it's day. been two week, two weeks gone by, and I, we, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't record last week, but we did put our predictions in. And in the yeah. past two weeks, thanks to uh, Lacazette getting the goal against Wolves, I won that week. And mm-hmm. last week, I also won. So that's back to back victories for your boy TJ in prem predictions, right? Um, so, uh, bro, as I said. Fergie time. It's Fergie time, baby. It's Fergie time. That's what they hey, call I'm it. Not, I'm not going to lie. Um, I've actually been usurped at the top of the table. Um, TJ's in the lead now with nine wins. I've got eight wins. K and SDLs, you know, well behind. Imagine I the truth yet. was Vex, yeah? He celebrated I was sword and then got Vex. Oh, <laughs> oh my. <laughs> day. You know how much game me? pissed me off? I said, oh, that's, you know, the prem prediction the last few weeks is what I've been concentrating on. And I'm like, that's why I'm so desperate to get it done because I, <laughs> I wanted to get it done offline because I was like, yeah, you know, I need to get back ahead. But he is now going ahead. I'm actually vexed. Like, you see, Uncle, you see, you see our boy Pepe. Pepe is a baller. Listen, I told you about our boy Pepe, you know. Hey, unleash, unleash, unleash Pepe. Uncle Pepe, yeah, you see. Um, let's get into this weekend. Uh man, I need I need a win. I need a win, I'm not gonna lie. Let's start with the wait, hold on. Okay, yeah, it's a bit of Burnley. Okay. Let's start with 
Burnley, Chelsea. Um, let's start with SD. I got the SD with this one. Burnley, Chelsea. 1 0 Chelsea. 1 0 Chelsea. Uh, TJ. Two. Two. Nil Chelsea. Chelsea. K. Throw oh, my scoreline. <laughs> I, was I know you like that too, no, Chelsea. I was going to say that. Um, I can really... Uh, I had to go for 3-0, then 3-0 Chelsea. Even though I can't see them scoring three goals, but... I need to start I need to start playing the thing now. I'm going to go for 1-1. One, one. I did think about that scoreline. So did I'm I. I'm go for 1-1. One, one. Um... Not only because I, I need the win, and all you guys went for wins, but Chelsea isn't right at this moment in time. And yeah. they're still not right. They're still not right. I know they picked it up for the uh, Carabao Cup game, but, you know, they're still not right. They just don't have finishes, so I'm going for 1-1. One, one. Uh, next game on the list is... Oh, the, all of the teams playing the weekend? Oh, no, sir. Ooh, Liverpool-West Ham. Yeah, Liverpool, West Ham. Okay. Um, this ended. This ended three two to West Ham in the reverse fixture. No, I see Liverpool winning this. I don't think West Ham are. Um, I feel like they're slowly beginning to struggle a bit. So I'm gonna go three one Liverpool. Three one Liverpool. I'm going to go 2 0 Liverpool. TJ? 2 1 Liverpool. ST? 3 0 Liverpool. 3 0. Isn't that why I just. No, I said 3 1. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I said 3 1. Next game is <clears throat> uh, Watford Arsenal. Watford home. Uh, TJ? 3 0 Arsenal. I'm going to go. Two one Arsenal. SD. Yeah. Three one three one Arsenal. We don't have goal scores at that time. K A. Uh what what was the score, you know? What's the scores that's already been mentioned? So 3-1. Uh, 3-1, 3-0 and 2-1. Yeah, yeah. 2-0 uh, then. Two okay. Nil. City Derby. Oh, God. Manchester Derby. Um, let's go to TJ. City at home. Five one, see you. <laughs> Bam, you're in the lead. Trust me, these 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 outrageous results are gonna are gonna cost you. No, no two no city. Two no city. Two no city. St. Uh, two one city. Two one city. Yeah. Okay. One nil city. One nil city. I'm going to go for 1-1. One, one. I think United scraper as well. Yeah. Mm. Last game is Tottenham Everton on Monday night football, I think. I'll start yes, this one off. Team. Tottenham Everton. Oh, God. It's a hard one. It's a hard, it's hard one. one. That could be anything. <laughs> Uh, that that game could actually be anything. Yeah, it could. But I think uh, <laughs> I know. I, I, I got I just got a scoring line to be honest. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Lampard gives Tottenham players nightmares. 
because of his former Chelsea past. I don't even know. Everton. I don't even know. I'm going to go 1-0 Everton. Nice. Yeah, 1-0 Everton. ST? Uh, 3-1 Tottenham. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, listen. Oh. Fulham, Fulham Broadway, Neil Warnock is shit, bro. I'm telling you. I he's know, bro. He's going to get that team relegated, bro. Yeah, he's... but it's Tottenham, man. Right? Yeah, but Tottenham, <laughs> listen. Conte, Conte will know what to do with, with Everton. Everton are bad. Okay. Uh... Um, I'll say 3-1. 3-1 to um, Spurs. Oh, wow. You're going Where are you guys coming up with these results? Because they like yeah, to react. They yeah, like to Everton, react. Yeah, they do. They do. And Everton oh. are not that good. They played well against City. They did. Then they, then they played bad against Burnley. Then they played well against Leeds. Then they played Everybody, badly against Middlesbrough. Everybody You're talking about well. Tottenham. I'm talking about Everton. I'm like, Everton played well against City. Oh, sorry. I, I, I didn't see the, that game properly. I saw the highlights. Why they played decent? TJ. Two two. Ah, oh, that's that sounds more something I would go for. But I think Everton win. Yeah, that's it. Um, I need a win. That's it. I need a win. I need a win. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's come down to. I need to win. So, yeah. Um, people, that is it from us. Another jam packed show. Obviously, we could couldn't afford. We couldn't fit more in because obviously we we run over time. Um, but let us know what you think in the comment section. Let us know you, what you thought about the Carabao Cup final. Um, yeah. Did the right team get the right team get the right result? Let us know what you think about Roman and the sale of Chelsea. Is it the right thing? Is it the wrong thing? Let us know what you think about the effect that it's going to have on Chelsea Football Club. Um, are you also praying for Chelsea's demise like ST is? Yeah. Um, let us know what you think about um, the Manchester Derby, United. Can they win? Can they not win? Will City do what they do and beat them. Um, will CPR7 actually get more than one goal in 2022? Um, should he be sold? Like Bruno should be sold. Like Harry Maguire should be sold. Like Lou Shaw should be sold. All these guys need to be sold. Um, let us know what you think. And also, <laughs> let us know your prem predictions. Let us know what you think in, in the comment section. We want to hear from you. Um, I'm going to say thank you very much to my guys, The Truth, Mr. K8 and ST. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thanks, Truth. man. Too. Uh people coming up. Um fight talk will be coming up. The review for UFC 272. Um, mm-hmm. that will be coming up. Obviously, 40 chat will be back. ST, there's no boxing, is there? Nothing uh, coming up in the near nothing future, is there? Preview nothing, to... nothing major coming up. Nothing major it's coming up this moment. It's only next month this thing, you know. Yeah, I'm saying early preview. Life. Oh, That's only like seven weeks away. Hmm. And obviously you've got Spent um Spence and you guys is is, is further away. Yeah. Mm, yeah, so nothing nothing for the foreseeable crazy, right though. now. Um yeah. obviously they're doing testing people, as I said, I for the for the F one, people will get oh, onto yeah. truth in the comment section, make sure that he does the Formula One um poddy as well. But um people, that is it from us. Stay safe. Obviously, as I said in the beginning of the show, thoughts and prayers go to the people of Ukraine right now. But as I also said, people, do your research and look at the bigger picture. Um, But stay safe and we shall see you very, very soon. Peace. Peace. Peace.